since the end of World War II, the helicopter has been the aircraft full of promise. The city centre to city centre airbus of tomorrow, or maybe the day after tomorrow. Yet somehow tomorrow has never quite come, and the helicopter still earns its daily living in specialised services, such as air-sea rescue. The helicopter has great attributes. It can take off vertically, it can land almost anywhere, and above all, it can stand still in its own medium. It can do things no fixed-wing aircraft can even attempt. All round the shores of Britain, air-sea rescue helicopters stand guard. They've saved many lives. Whenever disaster strikes, it's often the helicopter which is called in. At the Hamburg floods of 1962, helicopters guided hundreds of rescuers. They made many rescues themselves. The military and naval uses of helicopters are so many that they've perhaps not yet been fully exploited. They can take troops and supplies to and from the most inaccessible places. They're a built-in tactical surprise. But as transports, they've tended to remain VIP because problems of cost, noise and built-up area regulations have not yet been overcome. There are those, of course, who see the helicopter as the answer to many problems. The one-man, do-it-yourself, dodge-the-traffic kit opens up vistas of flying to work or making a quick getaway for the weekend. It's also a reminder that the road jams might merely transfer themselves upwards. Personal helicoptering is, however, at the moment, a minor sport. The serious work is still mainly military. All three services have helicopters, and for the RAF, when it comes to vertical flight, even experienced pilots have to go back to school again. Here at Turn Hill in Shropshire, they learn new techniques and come to grips with new and varied problems. Helicopter flying is different. The windmill blades on the top are really wings. They get their lift by whipping round and round through the air. The rotor head, complex and expensive, is the hub of these rotating wings. It can twist the blades to bite the air for a sudden upward jump, or it can tilt the whole rotor disc for forward flight. One main control embodies throttle, blade angle and rotor disc tilt. Helicopters are not cheap, either to buy or to fly or to maintain, and that is one of the reasons why they are still more often publicly seen doing their circus tricks than carrying Mr. and Mrs. Smith from A to B. The versatility of the helicopter is its great strength. Its economics are its biggest weakness. Yet it remains supremely the vehicle which can do things no other transport, air, sea or land, can even look at. The RAF's famous Mountain Rescue Unit underlines this point. In terrain like this, the helicopter, life-saving apart, is the cheapest form of transport, because it's the only possible transport. In mountains or jungles, or in swamps and deserts, the helicopter can save the cost of roads, if there can be roads, or of airports, if there can be airports. It is then the helicopter comes into its own.
the Rotodyne is Britain's most promising attempt to build a vertical takeoff airliner that would pay. This is a military medical demonstration where the Rotodyne transports personnel and supplies. But the civil version was near to meeting civilian needs for intercity helicopter services and for linking city centre and airport. The Rotodyne, half an aeroplane with its stub wings and ordinary propellers, looked very promising, but its noise was too great and the government had to let it go. But there is civil helicopter flying in Britain. Experimental scheduled services have stopped, but London's heliport at Battersea is busy on charter and special jobs. Is this the forerunner of heliports of the future? Of a future when multi-engine helicopters no longer have to follow the river to be considered safe? When they can land in all weathers on a huge roof over a railway station or on a great pontoon on the river itself? Twin rotors, as on this bridge-building RAF Belvedere, are regarded as essential for airline operation. BEA was at one time interested in a possible civil version of the Belvedere, but decided not. It may now ask for American Vertols, but this depends on many things, including a bigger London heliport and a possible government subsidy. Putting down military or emergency bridges for a thousand and one other important and specialized tasks, the helicopter remains the only vehicle. But as an airliner, it has never quite made it, not just in Britain, but all over the world. The specialized vehicle or the airliner? What is the real future of the vertical lift aircraft? Part of the answer may be in jobs like this, lifting the fragile-looking spire, which experts call a flesh, into position on the roof of Coventry's new cathedral. This was an operation which called for precision and judgment, and the RAF supplied both. The spire, 80 feet high and made of welded bronze rods, had to be lowered onto a space about four feet square. Slowly, the two-ton spire was guided exactly to where it was wanted. came an even trickier operation, putting the symbolic flying cross on top of the spire, fitting into a tube only three inches in diameter. At one time, the helicopter's future seemed clear. Today, we shall still have to wait and see what new breakthrough tomorrow may bring. <laughs>